Hi there, how are you today? Thanks for driving by and welcome back to my channel, the DR100 Concept uh, Class D Power Amplifier Project. Uh, and in this video, I'm going to redo the parametric test uh, to perform once again the maximum power output the uh, module can deliver to the load. Uh, since um, at the early days of uh, performing this parametric test, uh, I don't have the distortion meter. I don't know what is 10% distortion or 1% distortion because I don't have the uh, distortion meters. At the time, I just uh, simply estimate that 10% uh, distortion and um, it's not really correct. Huh? Well, thanks that uh, finally I have the uh, Megoro automatic distortion meter that uh, I can able to perform the distortion right now precisely and a more precise uh, distortion meter is the QA401 which is um, thanks again that I able to acquire it uh, and I've been using now to do the parametric test for the digital volume control at my back um, and I'm going to make use of that uh, equipment also which is quite uh, precise in measuring distortion. Regarding the setup, it's the same as in the discovering the Class D power amplifier in my video series, um, Discovering Class D power amplifier series 1, 2, 3, with the addition of the Megoro distortion meter plus the safety bulb. And um, I'm going to put in here the uh, safety bulb, which is um, necessary for bring up this, especially if you don't know what's going on with the board. That's right, fellow DIYers. Uh, I emphasize here the importance of electrical safety and hazard and uh, it must be the highest priority to protect ourselves and always practice the safest possible environment. Um, here I suggest to make use of the old school safety bulb during the bring up test especially when testing an unknown circuit which requires high power. My color distortion meter is connected to the um, left channel right now it's only one channel i can connect yeah? and i set it up to maximum of uh, let's say 30 percent distortion just to be safer and later on i'm going to um, add this uh, qa401 quad asylum for perfect uh, measuring the um, distortion so let's start that but uh, first thing first uh, let me have a zip on the lemon water this makes me feel better and uh, let's do that this is my protocol and it makes me feel better the second one is uh, to have an eyeglass uh, just for safety once again it's not about that I cannot see it <laughs> at 50 years old definitely eyes degraded but uh, the purpose of this is that I'm going to protect my eyes uh, whatever gonna happen in here since this is a bring up test in a bird label and uh, this is for the uh, safety bulb and uh, nothing happens because uh, I haven't powered it on. There is a power on or switch in here which uh, there is something wrong and immediately I can able to power it off. Let me set up the meter for reading the offset voltage. I put that into a millivolt. The very first test is the offset voltage and it must be within the specification. You cannot go to the next step if the offset voltage is not correct. 3, 2, 1 and there you go. The finger in there, in any case I can just do like that and power it off. So power it on again. Okay, um, in the left channel is a seven, minus 77.2 millivolt and the right channel is a minus 80.7 millivolt. And when I put an input, the offset voltage uh, do not jump uh, and that is good that's a good sign try to put that one into about uh, one watt output power let me put the distortion now to three percent maximum one percent maximum 0.3 percent maximum now i can lower it down to maximum of 0 0.1 0 point, 0 0.06 that is a 0.06% uh, distortion at 1 watt. I mean, 2.82 volt uh, voltage swing at the 8 ohms load is equivalent to 1 watt. Well, so far so good. 
I don't see any problem and the signal is stable the distortion is stable as I'm reading from the uh, Megoro that's right that's right guys uh, after playing for a while with the Megoro and the QA401 distortion reading I settled down with the QA401 from Quant Asylum it's awesome God gets that um, it's easy for data gathering and it can also display the spectrum I also use the DSO2820E from Virtins Technology with the multi-instrument application to capture the voltage swing at the load and when I'm comfortable with the setup and setting I started the preliminary process for reading the maximum output the module can deliver to the load what is that process you may ask first understand the power output at 10 percent and um, my initial reading says that it is about 80 watts per channel with that data i will need to operate the class d module amplifier to its one port of power with the music as the input it's not a sine wave having said that i will estimate the power to be more or less about um, 20 to 30 watts within a span of one hour both channel driven with the load and of course with that power in my small apartment i will need to make use of a resistive load instead of the speaker wow 20 to 30 watts of power in my small apartment my temporary shelter in my job site here in Shenzhen, china that would be quite loud after one hour when the amplifier already gets a little bit warm or maybe hot i will subject now the class d module to its maximum power output at three distortion level that is one percent five percent and ten percent well that is the test procedure i define for all my diy amplifier build and i documented that and publish in my one diy share.com website should you want to know more check it out that is www.diyshare.com following all the above idea i made the report available for you guys to check review evaluate and comment on it discriminate it this is a diy build class d module running the upgrade the TDA8950 this is the big brother of the TDA8920 which is the original chipset that uh, was used uh, in this project that is both uh, the chipset from Philips or NXP